Hey folks, so uh, in my previous video I showed how to assemble an Inker router table and what I'm going to be doing today is installing a Inker clean sweep. And what the clean sweep is, is it is a box. This is half of it. It's actually both halves. But the box mounts to the bottom of the router table and it connects to a dust collector hose and it gives your dust somewhere to go. So it has um, some better instructions and unlike the table itself, the parts are in clearly labeled bags that explain what they're for. So this is, this is a nice improvement. Um, however, they elected to print the paper on high gloss, they printed this on high gloss paper and, it, and you can see in the camera there's a lot of reflection off it so it makes it a little bit, there's a lot of glare when you're trying to read it. Um, so at any rate, without a whole lot of ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started and the first step is to assemble the two halves and um, in order to do that I need, I actually am, I want to get something to hold on to all this crap so it doesn't go all over the place so I'm going to stop filming, go get a magnetic tray to hold these and I'll be back. Okay, so the first step in this process is to put this together and um, you know, it's, it's fairly, you know, it's fairly nicely done. So let's see, what is the process here? So it looks like you put a screw with a lock nut. You know, if they made these even just a little bit smaller, they'd be that much easier to use. I'm joking. The, the print on this is really tiny. I kind of wonder about this stuff. You know, I, I have fairly good eyesight. I can't imagine that most of Inker's customers are younger than me. I, I kind of wonder if they've ever like done studies where they give this stuff to somebody and let them put it together and watch to see how that process goes and what they get frustrated with. So what I'm doing is I'm starting each screw and then I'm going to finish them with a, uh, a drill. It'll just save my wrists and my fingers from doing a whole lot of of turning and at the same time by starting these it prevents um, them from stripping out if I start them by hand. Okay so that side is done and I'm going to go ahead and just tighten these down. So that's the first step done. Here 
hear some noises, I need to see what it is. So the thin washers go on the screws on the blast gate and this is just a convenient way to keep this secured and then the lock washer and the nut go facing out and this provides the clearance. So just be sure to pay attention to the instructions on this part. Oh, and speaking of paying attention to the instructions, the blast and the gate needed to go through before this was installed. So we'll just undo this and no big deal. Yeah, I, uh, I think there are definitely better instructions out there, and it's fairly obvious that different people write these instructions for different products. That works. So that's the first step is we've got the box assembled and this is essentially how it works is that opens the blast gate and that closes the blast gate. So now I need to turn this over, I need to turn over the router table and mount this to the bottom. So door and black and here is a bag that is the mounting hardware. So let me get set up for the next step and I'll figure it out. So when you go to turn over your router table, um, take the table, out, take the router out because it will fall out if you don't. Um, I made the foolish assumption that, it, hey, it's mounted, it'll stay put. No, it's not mounted. It's just there. It's just sitting there. And unfortunately, the instructions don't specify that, so I didn't realize that it needed to come out. No big deal. So the next step is to figure out how this is going to mount. Basically, I'm just going to center it. And then once it's centered, I'm going to mark it with a pencil. This 
just lets me know if it moves. I shouldn't really need this. And then it says to drill it an eighth of an inch. So that's what I'm going to do. And unfortunately it will have to be moved for that. So the marks give me an indicator of where the screws need to go. And they don't appear to be, they appear to have a fair amount of uh, latitude in terms of where they're installed. All right, so that's in. And so now I'm just going to install these and I need to look at the instructions again to make sure I'm doing this right. But I think it's just the up, it's just a washer and a screw. And use the small ones where the track is at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these all started and then I will come back and finish them. And I'm doing the small ones first because it's harder to put them in the wrong spot. And again, I'm doing one on each side because that allows me to make sure that I've got everything in position where it needs to be. I've got one screw left to do, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down. Take that back, I have two screws left. Well, actually I have more than two screws left, but I only have one screw left to put in now. All right. So now I can flip this back around.
And the way you tell the doors apart is the one with the hole for the cord is the back. So we'll leave that there. And the one without the hole that has the sticker on it is the uh, front. So I'm going to bring my miscellaneous hardware. I only need the knob, so I'll put that back over there. And then I need to open E10. I wonder what the rest of E8 was for. So I guess all this is extra. Oh yeah. So for phenolic tables, the rest of this is just, that's what the rest of it's for. So. Uh, they give you a lot of extra hardware. I almost wish they'd done two bags, but you know, this is still better than the uh, table itself was. So now what I'm going to do is drop all this in and start to try and figure out what it actually is. And I realize I sound like maybe I'm being a bit picky, but this thing was like $1,000 and this is like $100. You know, they, they could separate the parts a little bit better for that kind of money. I don't understand how two screws go in there, but okay. So I think this will work. Start with Nope, needs to be shorter than that because whatever it is, this apparently this thread doesn't go very far. It looks like it's the shortest one they make. Mm -hmm. Guess we'll just have to do it. Um, it it's acting like I'm going to strip it out. So uh, that's what made me stop and go, ah, wait a second. So that's in. Quarter 20 large cylindrical nut. Quarter 20 machine screw. That must be this. Two each three sixteenths nylon washers. That must be this. I'm guessing that this goes like this. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Small nuts. With small screws. Doesn't say what size the screws are, so I'm guessing that all the other screws are the same size. And this is something that's kind of frustrating. I would expect to see 
you know, maybe better documentation here. installed. So this goes in by twisting, which is not covered in the instructions. Okay, so it just sits in here. All right, that's actually kind of a clever, clever way to do it. And it appears the two sides are um, universal. Okay, so. They actually tell you to do it um, differently. So what I found is if you put the, they, they say to sit here and do this like, you know, with one screw. But what I found is attach both of them, put it in at an angle, and then just twist it and it'll pop in place and you can slide it in where it belongs. All right, and now we get to deal with the back plate. So, and at this point, you need to just throw this through here. And then that goes there and then this will just sit up in here like this and get screwed in place. So that's not going to go smoothly. So I'm going to prep my screws so that I can do this like this. It would have really been better if they'd have used the same assembly with only a couple of screws, but I guess they don't expect the back plate to ever come out. And it doesn't really look like it matters which screws you use. You do need four of them though, with washers. And then you need nuts to go with them. So, at this point, we'll just simply loop this through here. I'm not quite sure how they expect this to be done. Ow, god damn it. Um, it's sharp. That's irritating. There's really not a nice way to do this. This is not, this is just not as nice as it should be. The other one was downright easy compared to this. So once I get a screw, a nut on each of these, it, it will get a lot easier. Right. 
and because these are at the top there's nowhere there's no way to get a screw in here I, I don't know I guess I'm gonna have to take the thing out to do this that's really annoying this is just not thought out these screws are up behind a panel and I don't, I don't know what you would use to get to them um, in fact I'm gonna reverse them because I'm not I, I just refuse to do it this way so I'm gonna put the screw in backwards and I'm gonna go get another lock washer be back in a minute so um, I didn't have any more lock washers so I've decided to just switch to using um, lock nuts um, it'll do essentially the same thing so I'm gonna put the screws in from the inside and put the lock nut on the outside and I'll need a wrench to hold them so this is still a pain in the ass but it um, should be easier Because where it's at, it's just, it's, it's an impossible place to install it. Um, it's just not very well designed, and that's really unfortunate. This is a design flaw. And if I didn't do what I'm doing, I would basically have to take the clean sweep out in order to install these two nuts. Now, if they took my suggestion and put the other kind of attachment on, the, like they did on the door, it would just slide up and it wouldn't be a big deal and then it would be secured at the bottom. So. hope I never have to take this off because it's a pain in the ass to get it on here it's going to be a pain in the ass to get it out of here now there's indentations on the back that'll hold a nut so that won't be a big deal well they would hold it if they were long enough So that's that. Now at this point what I need to do is attach the strain relief which will hold the cord in place. And I really need to look at this because I don't work with these very often. So it appears that you just close this with a pair of pliers and then it should slide in. We'll see if it's really that easy. So, there you have it. At this point, I've got the clean sweep installed. The only thing I need to do is um, the router table fell out when I um, turned the table over, which was kind of embarrassing. So now I need to take an Allen key, and there's a, a locking bushing screw on this that I need to just turn so it'll slip, slide back in. And then I need to rotate my table to the right orientation avoid smashing my fingers I got a little scratch on it you know it, it'll live it's a tool and it 
looks like it did a little bit of damage to my table, but you know what? It still holds. It'll be okay. So that's just something to note that if you turn the table over, um, you need to be careful of that. So there you have it. That is how to install a clean sweep on router table. And now at this point, the only thing I need to do is attach a um, dust collector to the bottom of it. So if I wanted to use this, I could open it or close it. And, um, you know, I, it, it'll probably stay in the open position. Um, so I'm real happy with that. That's going to cut down on the dust. And there are these clean sweep discs that come with it. So this is the big one. And then these are the little ones. And I'll, I'll go ahead and take some of these out so you guys can see what they do. I need to get a better thing to hold them in. And so essentially as you use different size bits, you can switch to different size ones. And I'll, I'll hold these up so you guys can see. So the, the hole for the bit is there and there. And what you do is you snap these in place and they are magnetically held in place. So let's use the tool here to, to lower this. So um, apparently there is a front and a back to these. I love puzzles, not. Okay, so there's a notch on here that indicates where it goes. once they're in, they're in. Uh, I wonder if I can use this to snap this out. I'm probably not supposed to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yep. The, the lift can be used to snap these out very nicely. They do snap in place. They're very tight. So there's a little notch on the corner, and it lines up with a little notch on the uh, router table. Um, and what these do is it gives the dust some place to go. So thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. My next step is to route the, the fence, which routes right here or mounts right here. And I'm real excited about that because at the end of that, it's done. Now that doesn't mean I'm ready to do anything with it. It just means it's done and I push it over here in the corner and then I can start on this monster of a table saw. Thanks for watching my video.